All right, good morning, everybody. This is the Fantasy Sports Boss. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe, hit that notification button. Wanted to discuss uh, the first two days, round one of the uh, 2023 NCAA tournament. And uh, those of you who have been riveted to the television, like myself, have seen an absolute wild first uh, two days highlighted by the second uh, number uh, 16 seed to ever upset a number one seed. Uh, when uh, FDU knocked off Purdue, a uh, very overrated Purdue team. But regardless of that, just a shocking result. The smallest team in the tournament uh, by far, FDU, who didn't even win their, their conference tournament, the NEC tournament, because Merrimack, which won, was not eligible to come into the tournament uh, as they transitioned to Division One. Just a staggering game. Um, and anybody who watched the Bracketology show, uh, I gave you the uh, couple of tidbits about Purdue who I can't stand. I never, you know, I suggest staying far away. I had said, don't put Purdue in your final four. As a matter of fact, maybe don't even put them in their elite eight. Um, Matt Painter is a terrible tournament coach. I group him in with Matt Barnes, um, with Jamie Dixon, you know, guys who just, uh, Fran McCaffrey, who st continually struggle in the tournament. Uh, and, and, and in turn, go with guys, um, you know, like Bruce Pearl, who always, you know, seemed to come out on top, especially in round world, round one, uh, you know, for Purdue. They lose to St. Peter's last year. Uh, they lose at just an unbelievable, uh, pitiful effort against uh, FDU and Matt Painter. The, it, the, the curse of Matt Painter goes on and on and on. So, uh, and again, I had given you guys the stat beginning uh, teams that began the season unranked by the Associated Press Top 25 uh, and then got a, a top two seed in the tournament coming into this tournament we're 0-34 making the final four now 0-35 Purdue doesn't do it um, Marquette who's in the same region they are the other team that qualifies for that as well I think it's wide open for Duke I gave you guys Duke and Kansas State as the two teams I liked coming out of that region um on my my various brackets, I split the baby between those two as far as putting them uh, in the east. Um, my and, and anybody who followed my advice is in pretty good shape because I have Alabama in the final four. Um, I, I also have Kansas and UCLA split the baby on those two as well. Uh, now, I also have Houston in the final four, which if I could trade them out right now, I would because Marcus Sasser re-injured his groin in round one. Jamal Sheed is also banged up, but they both said they're going to play. Uh, today against Auburn, and this is a really underrated Auburn team. Uh, who and I had picked Auburn that knocked off Iowa in round one, but we're going to go through all the games. Uh, but like I said, Houston, I would definitely uh, like to trade them out if I could uh, for Texas because Texas just looks unbelievable right now. They're getting three point shooting, which really elevates this team. That was their their weakness coming in. They drained everything, uh, you know, in sight in terms of three point shots in round one. Uh, when they destroyed Colgate, uh, who was the best three-point shooting team in the nation coming in. Uh, just just a great, great, great effort by Texas. But anyway, want to get through um, the uh, the games and just give you some thoughts on that. We'll start in the South region. So Alabama, really, they didn't even get hardly anything from Miller in which what was an exhibition uh, victory over Texas A&MCC. Uh, this is the best team in the country, in my opinion, controversy or not the Alabama this is Alabama's tournament to lose in my opinion especially now with Sasser being injured uh, or re-injured I should say uh, Maryland knocked off West Virginia I did take West Virginia the Big 12 hasn't looked exactly um, great yet uh, a couple of teams already have bowed out from the Big 12 uh, I, I you know this was a, a pure coin flip because Kevin Willard is a good tournament coach too he's one of those guys that I do tend to side with Kevin Willard but I just thought West Virginia was the better team um, and, and really they got out so they got out big in this one a big lead and they just couldn't hold it uh, had a shot to win it at the end, but Maryland goes on. I don't think Maryland's getting past Alabama. Um, okay, that brings me to the part of the uh, the bracket in the South that I told you guys was was making me really stressed. San Diego State against uh, Charleston and then Virginia against Furman. I picked uh, Furman. Told you guys, West Virginia, uh, excuse me, Virginia, the system, the plotting, get the shot clock down to, you know, two, three, and then shoot. It doesn't work. I know they won the, the tournament back in 2019. But they had DeAndre Hunter, an NBA, top NBA prospect on that team. Um, you know, you could give me, oh, they should have won. Kike Clark would just, I, beyond 
be it b bone, stupid, whatever you want to call it, mind-numbing uh, decision, boneheaded decision, throwing the ball up like that, especially when you had a timeout. This is an experienced guy who's played over 100 games at Virginia, Kike Clark. He's going to have to live with that for the rest of his life. You know, as Mike Frances, a local uh, uh, radio legend here, said, his better option would have been to just kick it into the crowd and, you know, and then give the ball over uh, to Furman. Instead of giving, literally giving it to them, uh, a three pointer on a silver platter there. But I did not like Virginia coming in. I don't like the ACC, Duke notwithstanding, because I actually think Duke is doing really well. Um, I'm not shocked at this at all. So I had picked Furman. Now I did go with San Diego State as much as that game scared me as well. The Mountain West is just terrible in the tournament on a yearly basis. Utah State went down. You know, San Diego State did not play well. I don't think they have any, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're rugged. They're good defensively. I'll give them that. It would not surprise me in the least if Furman knocks off um, San Diego State in this game. If San Diego State falls behind early, they're going to have a tough time catching up. Um, but San Diego State, and how about those who backed, uh, took the points with Charleston? 0 0.6 seconds to go. The refs call a foul on Charleston. They give two uh, two free throws to San Diego State. He makes both, and San Diego State gets the cover. They The refs should have just blown the game dead. That's it. It's over. There was no point in even shooting those free throws. Um, that is an all-time bad beat if you do bet and that's why I don't bet for situations like that uh NC State Creighton NC State played really well they could really fill it up the guards are amazing but Creighton pulled it out this was a good win the problem with Creighton is they lost uh one of their backup uh, big men and this is a team that's not deep uh, as it is I have them knocking off Baylor you know Baylor they 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 were sleepwalking through the first half against UC Santa Barbara but then they caught fire in the second half and pulled away they, they got three really good guards on Baylor they don't defend it's uh, while Creighton does defend very well and they have the two Ryans Nemphart and Kalkbrenner uh, it's going to be a very interesting game there I have Creighton moving on uh, Missouri I underestimated Missouri I had picked Utah State I underestimated Missouri I didn't think they were very good they were very good in this one they have a prime opportunity now to get to the Sweet 16 because Princeton upsets Arizona. Arizona and Arizona just awful, awful, awful job in the second half. Coaching, strategy, shooting, decision making, whatever you want to say. Second, uh, second time they have lost to a 15 seed. Um, you see, Santa Barbara had knocked them off years ago. The it, it's just this. It, and, and Arizona is another one of those teams that I tend to avoid in the tournament. I had them going to the um, uh, Sweet 16, um, but and but that's it because I just didn't like this Arizona team. Um, no McDonald's All-American on this team. That's another reason why I didn't put them in the Final Four because that's a really big trend. 41 of the last 44 champions had a McDonald's All-American on it. Purdue did not as well, and they're out. Arizona did not have a McDonald's All-American. They're out. So next season, make sure you look for a team with a McDonald's All-American on it. And so Princeton, great history of Princeton with um, upsets in the tournament, like upsetting UCLA. Um, you know, Can they knock off Missouri? Of course they could. So um, some chaos certainly in that South uh, region. All right, we already talked about FDU. Memphis should have beat Florida Atlantic. Just an awful, um, you know, and, and that's another thing we saw. There was a lot of bad decision-making. A lot of teams got very tight in the second half of their games. Arizona State comes to mind against TCU. They should have won that game. They were up eight with five minutes to go. You have to finish these games. You have to hit the free throws. These are young players. I get it. They're, you know, they get tight. Their arms get heavy when they're at the free throw line. They miss free throws. Um, just a terrible job by Memphis in the second half. They should have won this game. Florida Atlantic, a sharp shooting team, although they didn't shoot it well. Uh, now, Florida Atlantic, or hell, even FDU has an opportunity to get to the Sweet 16. And how about, that's one thing too I didn't mention about uh, FDU. Tobin Anderson, the coach of FDU, got a lot of crap for saying uh, on, on camera that they, he thinks his team could beat Purdue. And he got ripped to shreds for that. How about that? How about how, Where are the critics now? Unbelievably backed up his words. All right, Tennessee. Um, excuse me, Duke destroyed or or Roberts. And now I liked Oral Roberts coming in, but this was a terrible matchup for them. Uh, Duke is very long, very athletic. Max Acemas could not get any room. Kyle Flipkowski, Jeremy Roach are playing great. This Duke team looks scary. Talent was never in question. It's a young team, first-year coach. It took a while to get going. Um, I, you know, I, it's, I've had either Duke or, or, or Kansas State coming out of this region. Um 
you know, because of the stat that I gave you about teams starting unranked and then getting a top two seed, that was Marquette and Purdue, and Purdue's already out. It would not surprise me in the least if Duke gets to the Final Four. And I think they're going to beat Tennessee, who did a good job. I'll give him credit uh, against Louisiana. Rick Barnes, we all know his terrible tournament history. If he could beat Duke today, that would really um, call the dogs off, at least for a little bit. But I think Duke is going to kill Tennessee. They, you know, they don't have a point guard. It's I know they're strong defensively, but it's going to be a tough day for them. Kentucky, good win for Kentucky. This was a very good win against a good a quality coach in the Providence. And I do, um, I know they lost four or five coming in. So they were, they were skidding for sure. But Kentucky, this was a good win. Gets um, the, 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 at least quiets the criticism of John Calipari, um, you know, and, and talk about uh, what have you done for me lately? I mean, John Calipari, one of the best coaches in college history is now, you know, hearing uh, threats to his job. Good win for Kentucky. And listen, it would not shock me in the least. We've seen him do this before, talking about Coach Cal with Kentucky teams that didn't come into the tournament highly regarded, taking them very far. It would not, I didn't have the balls to do this, but Kentucky going to a Final Four would not shock me in the least. Michigan State had a really nice win over USC. They played great. This is a sharpshooting Michigan State team. Not great defensively, which is surprising because usually Tom Izzo teams are, but they're going to give Marquette all they can handle. Marquette in a walkover against Vermont. No challenge there. Marquette defensively has... has gotten better so and and listen they have an opportunity themselves now to get to that final four I still like Kansas State uh who I didn't talk about Kansas State uh nice win for them over Montana State the problem with Kansas State and they have a big time player Marcus Noel and also Keontae uh, Johnson there um the problem with Kansas State is that they turn it over constantly there's they're one of the worst teams in the bracket uh, that as in terms of turnovers, that is scary to me. I'm worried about Kansas State with all these turnovers. All right, on the other side, Houston knocked off North, uh, Northern Kentucky. It was a little bit of a struggle, and Sasser says he's going to play. Jamal Sheet is also banged up, says he's going to play. I don't think Sasser is going to play, and they should not have played him in this game anyway. Um, took a major risk there, and like I said, if I if I could take them out of the bracket, I um, out of my Final Four, I would. Auburn over Iowa. I told you to go behind Bruce Pearl. He's fantastic in the first round of tournaments. Fran McCaffrey is not. He doesn't have a good history, uh, and he's just a jerk as you know as well. So it was nice to see Auburn win. Miami really struggled with Drake. So for the, for the first time in a in recent memory, a twelve did not knock off a five. Drake almost pulled it off with their sharpshooting effort, but Miami three guards. Uh, I know they're dealing with injuries, but they were able to really pull this one out there. Indiana, Kent State. Um, you know, Miami has an opportunity really to get to that uh, Sweet Sixteen. Iowa State and Pittsburgh. Iowa State sent offensive basketball back 50 years. It was pathetic. Now, this is another Big 12 team. Maybe I overrated. They, they could not hit the broad side. They couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. They didn't even know what to do with the ball. I mean, it was they couldn't hit free throws. They could not hit threes. They were one for 15 at one point from three-point range. They couldn't hit bunnies at the rim. They couldn't hit anything. Iowa State would just embarrass themselves. And in Pittsburgh's not even that good. Pittsburgh couldn't score either. But Iowa State, man, I j just awful, awful, pathetic, awful performance. They should be ashamed of themselves. That's how pathetic that performance was. And Pittsburgh, you know, um, every year we've had a first four team, pretty much every year since the first four was introduced, that had gone on to the next round winning two games. So Pittsburgh is that team this season. I don't think Pittsburgh is any, uh, really is much of anything. I think Xavier is going to beat them. But Xavier almost lost to Kennesaw State. And Kennesaw State should have pulled that off. And that's a, another classic example of a young team on the stage for the first time. And literally Kennesaw State never made the NCAA tournament before that just froze. They froze at the end. I know the Xavier kid blocked it at the rim right at the end there uh, when it looked like the Kennesaw State point guard had a, had a step. But... Uh, they missed free throws. They took some bad shots, Kennesaw State. This was a, a a game that was really there for the taking. Xavier is lucky that they put, they were able to escape there. Um, but Xavier does not play any defense. I can't see them beating Texas. Texas is going to run Xavier off the floor. Uh, Texas looked great against Colgate. Texas, along with Duke, probably the most impressive uh, first-round performances, in my opinion. I was worried about Texas coming in because they don't have a good tournament history. They have a, uh, a coach who just you know became the, the head man halfway through the season. Um, and three point shooting was not their strength coming in, but they really lit it up, um, you know, against, against Colgate talking about lighting it up. Penn state did that against a very good Texas A&M team. Texas A&M just had a bad day. Penn state was hitting everything from deep and that's their MO. If Penn state gets hot, they could really uh, put a scare into Texas, but, 
Um, you know, it, it's really ride or die with the threes. Norm Roberts coached Kansas against Howard, an easy win for Kansas. It's nice for Norm Roberts to actually coach a team with players, unlike when he was at St. John's as the head coach there. Um, not sure how long the, the – you know we're gonna we're gonna have uh, Bill Self sideline as he uh, had that stent put in, but this is a Kansas State uh, Kansas team that should not overlook Arkansas. This is a tournament tested team, really good players on on uh, Arkansas, and they have Eric Musselman, a coach who knows how to win in the tournament. So Kansas got to be careful with Arkansas. Arkansas looked good against Illinois, uh, great defensively. They were hitting shots from the outside. This is an Arkansas team that's playing really well. Uh, St. Mary's never in doubt against VCU. Listen, I, I I did pick St. Mary's, um, but I was I was liking VCU coming into this game. It just didn't happen. St. Mary's is so fundamentally sound. You know, they they're a better Virginia. They they the great defensively. They do drain the clock a little bit, but they can shoot unlike Virginia. And that they're gonna they're gonna be tough, I think, for UConn, who walked all over Iona. Iona was winning at the half. This is one of the games I look forward to watching the most. Um, the opening uh, week. Um, two days there, but UConn was just so much bigger than Iona. Iona could not handle them on the boards. It was only a matter of time before UConn got, uh, you know, took control of the game and they were hitting their outside shots as well. I'm uh, really curious about this UConn St. Mary's second round game. Listen, they got over the hump. They lost in the first round the last two years talking about UConn. They have an opportunity now to, now that that monkey's off their back to relax a little bit and see how far they could take this. Uh, TCU, Jamie Dixon tried to give the game away. He is lucky. But Arizona State played very, very tight the last five minutes. They were up eight. No excuses. They should have won that game. Bad job by Arizona State. Uh, TCU pulls this one out. They're not any good. You know, Gonzaga's going to destroy them. Gonzaga in a walker, a walk-off over uh, Grand Canyon. I know Grand Canyon hit some shots early on, but Gonzaga's, they should handle TCU, no problem. Northwestern over Boise State. Second year in a row, I picked Boise State in round one, and I re lived to regret it. So, you know, Northwestern, second tournament win ever. Uh, good effort for them there. UCLA look great. So UCLA, who has injuries of their own, um, looks so much better than Houston did. Um, I think UCLA, who I picked to win it all in one of my brackets, um, and I have them in the Final Four. Uh, I'll obviously have them in the Final Four. I picked them to win. But I think UCLA or Kansas is coming out of this bracket. I don't think Gonzaga, they've, defensively, they're not good. And I, I just didn't have faith in UConn. So there you have it, guys. It was a great first couple of days. Looking forward to today's schedule. Um, we'll discuss all of these second-round games on Monday. So uh, hit the subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button when you uh, see uh, I'm going to be going live or putting up some more videos. And also live stream later today uh, for to discuss NFL free agency because it's still primarily a fantasy football channel. But I uh, wanted to talk about the tournament as well. So uh, I will chat with all of you later. Have a great day.